So remember that time I installed Android TV using Bluestacks? Yeah, that emulator full of ads, pop-ups, lag, and just general chaos. It kind of worked, but let's be honest, it felt more like Android TV if it were running on a potato. I really hope by now you uninstalled Bluestacks and apologize to your PC, but today we're doing it properly. Welcome to the real Android experience. No emulators, no fake TV launchers, and definitely no sketchy app stores. I mean, kind of. In this video, I'll show you how to download the ISO, create a bootable USB, install Android directly on your PC, and enjoy a smooth, clean, native experience. And I promise you won't take more than 5 to 10 minutes of your time. But once it's done, you'll be running real Android, not some slow virtual mess. So grab a Lenovo or whatever dusty PC you got laying around and let's do this the right way. Now, before you jump in with questions, uh, no, I did not make this. I'm just testing out like you and honestly, I found it the same way most of us do. By watching YouTube videos late at night when I should be sleeping. So credit where credit is due. I'll leave links in the description to the Telegram group and the YouTube channel of the person who actually built this project. And honestly, well done to them. It's a beautiful build and really gives us a proper Android experience on real hardware. Alright, so what do we actually need to keep this project rolling? Uh, first up, you'll need a mini wireless keyboard. Trust me, uh, navigating Android with a full-size keyboard feels weird. Next, a SATA SSD, a USB 3.0 to SATA adapter if you want to install it externally. And yes, you can install this experience on a USB drive, but you'll still need to boot into it properly. This is optional. In my case, I'll be using a SATA SSD as the boot drive just to keep things snappy. And of course, the most important part, your dusty old PC. Maybe it's from eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or your mom's closet, doesn't matter. Mine, I'm going to my trusty Lenovo M910Q tiny PC and is more than ready for a glow up. Now, I do hope everyone remembers the specs of this little beast. We're working with the Lenovo M910Q tiny, compact but powerful. It's got an Intel Core i5-7500T, 16 gigs of RAM and plenty of ports for us to mess about. And like I mentioned earlier, I'll be installing this Android experience straight onto a SATA SSD. Because we like things fast, clean and not running off a 15 year old USB stick. Alright, let's head straight into it. First things first, yes, you'll need Telegram to get this, the files. They got two groups, one called Tulio and another called Android TV, both managed by the creator. We're going to the Tulio group for this, click on the pin messages and from there head to their website link. Open a fresh Chrome tab, click the hamburger menu and select the Google TV option. Now yes, you will need to go through a couple of monetization style redirect pages, but don't worry, it's safe, just mildly annoying. Once you're through, you'll get access to the file. Just download it and save it for now. We'll use it in the next step. Here we are. We, you download your Google TV ISO file and don't forget you also need a data zip file which contains the important 4 gigs image we'll use later. To create a bootable drive we're going to use Rufus. Open it up and simply drag the ISO file into the app. You can leave all the settings as default. No need to mess with the file systems or partitions unless you know what you're doing. Just make sure that your USB stick or SATA SSD is already plugged into the PC before you click start. Rufus might show you a couple of warning messages, like it's going to format your drive, but that's normal. Just confirm and continue. The writing process will take a few minutes, depending on your drive speed. Once it's done, your USB or SSD will be ready to boot, but we are not quite finished yet. You will now need to open the same USB or SSD in the file explorer and take the 4 gigs data zip file you downloaded earlier. Just extract it directly to the root of your drive, not inside any folders. So the contents of the zip file sit right next to your system files. 
This step is important because it's how the Android system saves your settings, apps, and all the good stuff. And here we are. Welcome to the real Android experience. If you followed all the steps correctly, you should now be greeted by a boot menu. That's your sign that things are working. Now, this part might look a little intimidating at first. Uh, you'll see a few different boot options and maybe something about kernels. Don't panic, this just means the system is giving you choices for hardware compatibility. Some kernels work better on certain PCs than others, so you might have to do a little trial and error. In my case, I'm going with option 3, which tends to work best with my Lenovo M9010Q. And you make your selection, sit back and give it a few moments. The first boot always takes a little longer. When the system finishes loading, you'll enter the Android setup process, just like a brand new tablet or TV box. Start by selecting your language, time zone and Wi-Fi network. You'll also be prompted to sign in with your Google account and yes, you can totally use a throwaway Gmail if you're just testing things out. After that, you'll go through the usual list of Google permissions, location, backups, diagnostics and all that. Feel free to accept everything if you're feeling generous or decline it all if you like me and you're trying to keep Google from knowing more than it already does. Next, you'll be asked to name your device. I'm keeping it simple and calling it Android TV. And that's it. You're now officially running a full Android TV environment right on your PC with no emulator in the site. It's smooth, responsive, and feels just like a proper Android box. Because now, it actually is one. So, I had a little look around to see what we are working with inside the Android system. First, I checked the storage, and yep, the 4 gigs partition we added is showing up and working just fine. It's not massive, but it's more than enough to install the your must-have apps, you know, the usual suspects. YouTube, Jellyfin, maybe RetroArch if you're into retro games. Honestly, it feels just like using a regular Android tablet or TV box. Everything is responsive, clean and surprisingly smooth. In the app section you'll already see some pre-installed stuff depending on the build, but we are going to take it a step further. Let's head over to the Play Store and download our very first app, and of course we starting with YouTube. Once that's in, uh, we'll grab the Jellyfin app too, because what's an Android TV box with your own media server? And now the moment of truth, let's open up YouTube and try running a 4K video just to see how well this setup handles playback. Alright, now of course the next thing to do is fire up Jellyfin app and connect it to our media server. Start by entering your server address. If you've been following my previous videos, you'll know exactly where to find it. Once you type that in, go ahead and log in with your user credentials. And just like that, you're in. The interface loads up quickly. The layout is exactly what you expect from Jellyfin. And even on this Android system, everything feels snappy and responsive. You can scroll through your movie library, uh, browse TV shows, check your playlist, no lag, no crashes, just a smooth experience. Navigation works great with a wireless mini keyboard or even a basic remote setup if you're using one. So yeah, you got a full Android TV box running on a real PC and now it's fully connected to our media server. That's the dream, right? Wherever is streaming your favorite shows or just showing off your tech skills, this setup does the job really well. We didn't just install Android, we built a functional personalized home media hub. And honestly, I'm impressed by how well it turned out. Now let's actually put it to the test and I'm going to start playing a movie just to see how it handles real playback. So, final thoughts. Honestly, I'm really impressed how everything came together. 
we took an old Lenovo Tiny PC, the kind of thing you might find collecting dust on a shelf, and turn it into a fully functional Android TV box. And not just any box, one that can stream 4K YouTube videos, run Jellyfin, access the Play Store and give you the clean Android interface, all without the usual emulator headaches. Is it perfect? Not quite. You might need to try a few different kernels, your Wi-Fi dongle might not work out of the box, and no, it's not a plug-and-play fire stick, but what you got is freedom, speed, and honestly, a bit of fun. You build it yourself, you customize it, you turn a PC into a smart TV, and that feels good. At this point, you can even walk up to your mom and say, hey, I built this, wanna watch your favorite shows? She'll be proud, trust me. If you're into a project like this, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what you think about this build or if you tried it. Until next time, thanks for watching and enjoy your new Android TV experience.